Hey, we're back in Las Vegas. Uh, we're live. The Cube, SiliconAngle.tv is the Cube. Our flagship telecast. We go out to the events where there's news and events, and we'll get the action, extract the signal from the noise. And uh, we're here in Las Vegas for the Hewlett Packard ProLiant Gen 8 server announcement. We just saw the press conference live. You can always come back to SiliconAngle.tv. We'll have highlights and on-demand uh, video there to watch it. But uh, we're going to now extract the signal from the noise and break down the event. And I'm here with uh, Dave Vellante, uh, co-founder of Wikibon.org, with his co-founder, uh, lead analyst, uh, David Floyer. Guys, welcome to the uh, session here. Obviously, the roundup here, we want to just go in and drill on the roundup of uh, HP's announcements. We're in Vegas, a lot of action going on. VMware's here with their partner alliance down the street. You got the uh, Data Warehouse Institute here. Um, your, your colleague, Jeff Kelly, is out there scouring the landscape in the data warehouse world. Um, and, uh, you know, not to, not to kind of pat you guys on the back, but I will, you know, you, we've been talking about this move to systems architecture, David and Dave, uh, IO-centric in, in infrastructure, David Floyd recently put out, that has been a very big hit, Jeff Kelly put out the Big Data Manifesto, and uh, SiliconANGLE obviously covers cloud, mobile, social, and big data. So, you know, we love this. I mean, this is like for us, uh, red meat. So let's break down the announcement uh, from HP. They announced the Gen 8 storage. So, so Dave and David, let's break that down. Dave, what's your quick reaction to the highlights here? Obviously the digital world, we're exploding with data. Server architectures are changing. Cloud people, cloud service providers going crazy. So what's your take? Well, I mean, I think it's, the trend is, was quite, quite obvious to us that data was really the, the big factor uh, in the industry. And it's, we, we're, we're living in a data-centric environment. And big data is you know, born out of that. And it's interesting, uh, David Florida here, now, uh, a server vendor, HP, the leading server vendor, talking about the data tsunami, right? You're usually used to hearing storage people talk about that, and there's a chart they show up and to the right. It was the first point, the first pillar, they called it, HP, that they really talked about. And you've been talking about IO-centric architectures now for quite some time. We've been covering big data at Wikibon and SiliconANGLE. And um, are we seeing um, the, a, a change in the in the business model, in the, in the problems that server companies are trying to solve? Uh, yes, uh, the, the, the server structures are going to, towards, uh, away from structured data to unstructured data. Uh, the amount of unstructured data that's in the servers themselves is increasing dramatically. And there's a move in general o o from uh, the the arrays, storage arrays, to a lot more data in the servers. There's no doubt about that. And and uh, that move means that they have to solve the problems of storage in those server racks. And so let's, let's, big problems let's just solve. break this down. So let's just review the key the key products. So I took some notes here. I'll, I'll read from the paper, uh, from the keynote, I mean the, the live press conference. Obviously their number one uh, they call it pillar, is uh, storage I.O. And that's, uh, you know, we're talking about solid state, uh, smart data protect and data services. That's a storage thing in, in a server announcement. So they're talking about convergence. So that really addresses some of the dynamic workload. Pillar two that they announced in this server innovation is the whole server management. That's, you know, the classic, I got a zillion servers and they're stacked up and it's management of that and all kinds of, of provisioning issues. And third is the space space issue. Data centers aren't getting any bigger. They cost more power and cooling. Uh, so break that down. Are those are those three areas, uh, did they do a good job talking well, about that? Well, the, the server area, if you, if you the storage area, that job is being addressed. Um, I don't think this announcement says actually anything very new in that particular area. Um, they've had uh, um, solid state drives, they've got PCI drives. Um, yes, it, it highlights that they've done some work in terms of automating and, and getting information about that. But the actual products themselves, that, that, that's not new. Really, that's an interesting nuance that you're bringing up because essentially the messaging would say otherwise. I mean, right. getting data yeah. in and out. The messaging says we're getting data in, in and out faster. I inferred that they're actually re-architecting architecting systems to do that. In your opinion, that's not the case? There, there's a little bit of architecture. They've got some nice solutions for data protection within the servers. That that's nice, but in general, they've got a hold, the, the industry has got a hold of that, and, and so have HP. I think far more important is they're addressing the complexity of these large number of servers in Iraq. Um, OPEX is the real issue that they're trying to address. So, so would you say that's the core problem? I mean, that seems to be the core issue. Yeah, it, because it's so much uh, human effort, human time required to provision to manage, to service all of these servers. Lots of mistakes are made. You know, the, the biggest cause of downtime is 
people pulling things out. Human they error. Shouldn't. I just tweeted human that. Human error. Yes, yeah. human error all the time, and it's absolutely true. So it's it's automating that. It's it's trying to simplify, take away things that are not necessary, collect all that data, and make this closed loop feedback. And I think that's an incredibly important. I, I would sort of I would agree concept. with you. I would agree with you. But I want to just drill down. That's the server thing because that's that's pillar number two. But let's go back to the pillar number one. Storage I/O. Obviously, I just tweeted. It's all about storage and convergence, yeah. baby. Yeah. And that was yeah. kind of my, my sound bite. But really, you was know, they pound baby. Or? You know, <laughs> pound Gen Eight. <laughs> Actually, weaved in Cloud Connect and Santa Clara, where Alex Williams is at. No, but seriously, low. This notion of dynamic workload acceleration. It sounds vague to me. I mean, so you know, we've talked about this in the past and with Fusion I.O. as a context Absolutely. at the yes. uh, yes. Node Summit where Node.js mm -hmm. was addressing a lot of those I.O. latency mm -hmm. issues. That's a different app set, or is it? What's your view on that application marketplace? Oh, is it important to increase the IOPS through the servers? Absolutely. I mean, that that is, uh, that trend is very, very strong indeed. It, and it, it's been happening for some time. My only issue is that the, there's, there's nothing particularly new in this announcement about that trend. So it's not very but meaty. So when they it, say it, dynamic it, workload acceleration, what is that? It, 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 Buzzwordy? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's not cloud washing. It's <laughs> dynamic <laughs> workload acceleration washing. That's, I mean, what do you yeah, what do you call that? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great set of words. <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> dynamic workload Workload acceleration. acceleration. Okay. Yes, right. Yes. But I, that's solid state. I mean, we're, you know. It's solid state. It's it's. What, did they miss nice it? Did they miss that? Here? There's some nice things they're doing in terms of monitoring what the workload is and being able to, if you need to, uh, uh, put greater caches in and be able to use caches to, to monitor the uh, that and that's particularly valuable in the VMware environment. So there's some some nice things in there, yeah. but it's, that's not that's not that's not where the money is. I in my Dave, view. Dave, don't yeah. jump in yet. I want to ask one more thing. Architecturally. Mm. Are they in a d good direction? Oh, absolutely. The, the architecture of, of capturing all of this data, being able to take it, give it to their partners, give it to themselves, simple things, but like knowing what server is where, what the warranty is, all of that sort of simple, seemingly simple stuff is incredibly useful in being able to actually service it, whether it be a partner servicing it or whether it be a, um, a uh, uh, themselves. Uh, or someone remotely from a you know, call center. Yes, absolutely. Right. The right data. That to me is incredibly useful and the right architecture. And that's going to allow them, if you like, to avoid um, that together with the consolidation of servers and storage and being able to uh, 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 combine those. It's going to keep them uh, away from other vendors, for example, trying to put in very large you know, mainframe type uh, uh, devices. It'll protect them to some extent from that market. So David, you were talking about, you know, they said earlier, that's not where the money is. Where is the money? You talk to a lot of right. clients. What are they telling you in terms of where the money is? The, the money- Specifically, I'm talking about CIOs and, and, and right. admin types. The money is in the operation and services costs. The, 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 cost of, uh, the cost of maintenance, um, the cost of operations, that's the money. Um, and in, in the work that I've done, the save, potential savings, that's where uh, uh, roughly about 50% of the savings are going to so, come. So Mark from. Potter, we just listened to his keynote, he said that $24 million is spent on manual operations over yeah. three years, $29 million in energy costs, this is for the typical yeah. data center over three years. Interestingly, the focus is on unplanned downtime costing uh, $10 million an hour, I want to come back to that. 3X, they're talking about Gen X delivering 3X admin productivity. Uh, giving 30 days annually back to the admins, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What are your numbers showing? You've done a, a sort of a back of the na napkin you know, analysis of this. What are you seeing? Is, uh, are those numbers valid? Are they well, yes. spot on? Are they inflated? So some of them are, and some of them uh, okay, well, which you know, they're, are, they're mixing they're Which mixing ones are spot on? Which oranges. ones are conservative? <laughs> which ones are double counting? Cut through that for us. So, so in uh, w one of the parts of their announcement was that they could improve the power by 70%. 
and, and that was power per compute. Well, I think we have to take it for granted that power, the power of the servers are getting greater every year. So that's and a so Moore's law. That's a Moore's law well, overestimate. Well, yeah. yes. Okay, well, that okay. sounds good, but yeah. I see, well, you're yeah, right. Yeah. So every, anybody it's who's on Moore's law, can, yes. which is yeah. everybody, can, can claim could, could some claim of that. Could claim exactly so, that. Yeah, yes. so that's <laughs> a, a large, so you're saying a, 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 the preponderance of that 70% is Moore's law. Uh, uh, so uh, you. Uh, uh, there's a, the, no, no, about half of it is about. Uh, okay. Maybe just a little bit over half is Moore's law. And the other half is Gen 8 It's genuine. Oh, okay. Absolutely. So it's a significant number, but it's not. It's not seventy percent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's good marketing to say seventy. It's a nice number. It's a nice number. Yes, Fifty is great. Damn number. good too. It's a fact, though. <laughs> it's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. Yeah, yes. Fact-based marketing. <laughs> <laughs> it is a fact. It's true, <laughs> but uh, it do, it, that's not what a customer is going to see. One of their customers is going to see, but. I, I, mean, customers, I mean, customers want reliability. The channel partners and their sales force yeah. want, you want to maximize the service revenue Absolutely. and the, at the co lowest yeah. cost point, which is automation. Absolutely. Okay, so, yeah. so, so, so that helps us squint through that piece. What else? Right. So, so the, the, the three areas where they're going to save money are on facilities. And of course, uh, was it well over 50% of IT shops don't pay for facilities. So that's a little bit difficult sometimes for them to get to focus on. But it's certainly very important that they should focus on that because the, you know, the acquisition cost, the cost of, of, of power and facilities is roughly the same as the acquisition cost over five years. Did you get a sense from their design innovations? They, they were throwing some pretty good numbers up there. Obviously, the, you know, we tweeted $300 million, two-year project, but you know, we saw the video ad that they're running on SiliconANGLE TV uh, is touting 150 design innovations. Do you have any insight into what that is? I, the, there are. There are a huge number of small innovations, which makes it very, very difficult to summarize, but lots of little... Like what, monitoring and big data stuff you mentioned uh, earlier? Uh, monitoring it, for example, being able to put in a, a a, a new process, a, uh, um, chip without bending the pins. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, all of this human stuff that human breaks. Human stuff that there is oh, lots and lots of little tiny ones. I, I could make a list about okay. a thousand yeah. lots. Yeah. We, we limited sure, air time. Yeah, actually, <laughs> so it could be twenty four seven. So on this. I want John. I want to come back to the economic you know model because yeah. HP is making some bold claims, and I mm. want the audience to be able to you know hear mm. David's analysis. So what's the bottom line? I mean. How, how much is this actually going to save a, a customer in terms well, of you know, server costs? We, we have a standard model, and uh, it's a, a billion dollar company, 4,000 users, roughly spending 3% of their revenue on, on IT. Mid-sized company. Mid-sized yeah. company of that sort. We have a standard model which we, which we use. And if we, we look at that uh, from the point of view of the overall IT budget, uh, and that's development, all uh, everything, PCs and everything which are not affected by that. My, my estimate is that this generation will save them around 4%, about a million dollars uh, per year. So over three years, that's you know three point three million dollars. So that's everything: that's infrastructure, facilities, is, maybe a little bit of development. Maybe exactly. Not, yeah. Okay. Right, like now, how about the server time. piece? What if we drill down into the server piece? So if we take servers, servers are around 20, 25, 26 percent. If you include the uh, facilities cost and some of the software cost and things like that, if you if you take them out as a group, around 26 percent. Now, of that 26 percent of that 30 million then there's a saving of 14, 15% of that. That's directly attributable to Gen 8. To Gen 8, in my view, they, they'll be able to make savings of around 15%. Now, sometimes that'll be indirect because it'll be the services that, that they buy in. Well, like you said, the, fa yeah, fac the facilities. The facilities, for yeah. example, or services they buy in yeah. for, for maintenance or services they buy into, or they may outsource the, uh, the servicing. So they will see that indirectly through more competitive uh, qu quotes. But if they're doing everything themselves, around 14, 15%. How much yeah. of a competitive differentiator is, is this in your opinion? I, I actually think it's, it's pretty good. Um, they've put in a lot of effort into addressing this, and it's been a two-year project. Uh, now, obviously, the, the other the other vendors there's there's, uh, there's IBM, of course, which and they've got a pretty good track record of, of of innovation in this area, but HP have in in my view have got by far the biggest uh, push in this whole area of reducing operational costs that I've seen, other than things like BCE, where they've really taken a different you know uh, a, a limited choice. Yes, yeah, a yeah. it's sort of greenfield. 
It's a greenfield case. environment, so they and they've limited choice basically right. by by saying, okay, you can have those two cells. You know, the, the Henry the Ford. Yeah, you, know, the you can Henry, have you any have color you want as long as it's black. black kind of yes, thing, yeah. taking another approach and a, and a valid approach, but given given that uh, Hita, uh, that, that HP are, have so many different servers, all of these commodity servers, this is in my view the best uh, best uh, version that I've seen. Uh, by, by a long way. How about the broader context? We, you know, they're making a big deal out of uh, 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 three major announcements in 100 days. We saw Project Moonshot, uh, Pr Project Odyssey, and now Project Voyager. Do you, as a, as a person who's observed servers, used to be at IBM, yeah. um, you know that market really well, do you see those as the, the, the mark of a new change in this space? Uh, I see them as HP being uh, investing in this strongly in this area. I see the consolidation of servers and storage, uh, being able to put them out as a single SKU that, that move towards that, again, as a very strong way of reducing operational cost and, and maintaining market share. I think it's a strong, strong move on their part. And IBM, Cisco, and uh, and Oracle, I suppose, are the three uh, biggest uh, competitors in this area. So th they're they're going to have to invest as well if they're going to stay up. Each of them has their own sweet spots, obviously. Um, mainframes are doing very well with IBM, and uh, Oracle is doing very well in the database area. So I want to go back to John's point about this IO-centric architecture, which I think is a really major theme, and you know, one that we've been hitting hard. So you've got, um, we saw last week EMC announced VF Cash. We've certainly covered Fusion IO. HP's a big partner of Fusion IO. We see HP Today talking mm. about Flash. Mm. Certainly, mm. you know, Oracle and others have announced Flash. Where, in your opinion, so we're seeing this, this Flash hierarchy emerge and change the storage hierarchy. Uh, where do you see as the logical point of control? First of all, do you need a single point of control? And where should that be? Should it be in the server, the storage array, the network? Uh, there are t two different levels. There's a, there's a level of management that's required for active data, and there's a level of management that's required for archiving and other sorts of data like that. So, and they can be in two different places. But it's clearly that uh, if big data is the way that things are going IO-centric, the data, the, the architecture will be top-down. You'll develop uh, the applications together in the, s in the servers. You'll bring together that data. You'll bring it down so that, uh, so that uh, the metadata and the indices can be uh, provided in, in real time. And the management of that has to be much more server-centric than it is uh, storage-centric, uh, which has been the way it's gone for the last uh, you know, 20 years. It's now the pendulum's moving back. So. I strongly believe that uh, the management of that will have to come uh, more from the server level than it will from the storage level. Uh, for the archiving uh, data and the uh, backup data, I think that can be uh, much more of a, of a, of a storage-led uh, environment. Um, but th th you cannot manage things from a slower place to a faster place. You have to be top down. You have to manage there's top a, down. There's a quote here on Twitter. I'm reading a comment. Um, just checking out the Twitter stream while you're elaborating on the architecture. Um, you have to be careful not to make the servers too smart. We don't want to be out of a job. <laughs> so, I mean, that always brings, first of all, we've been talking about how the economy has turned around for the past decade. Mm -hmm. IT's been a living hell. You know, budget cuts, budget cuts, op, get the OPEX number down, but now we're seeing this shift towards this new architecture, IO-centric, among other things. But we've talked in the past, the three of us on theCUBE here, about top-line growth, where these apps and are generating business yeah. value, right? So there's that top-line revenue growth. So, yeah. so it's a zero-sum game, in my opinion. What's your view on all this? I, it, it, to me, it's not a zero-sum game. I, I think the value, the business value of big data applications as they come on board, as they're redesigned, as they, as IO is taken as a constraint, is taken away as a constraint, those, the value of those applications is going to be enormous. And I, I see uh, a, an increased 
uh, spend in terms of new applications, new ways of doing things that will give very, very high returns, particularly to those that are the leaders. So, so ask, answer the guy's comment. I mean, he's obviously being hey, tongue in cheek, hey, but I mean, you know, it is a concern. People are always worry about their job, and we're hearing absolutely. great things about the channel yeah. here. And you know, HP Storage well, is opening 100% uh, selling through the channel and, and new clients and storage. And so, there's money making and services, the services angles. We say, yeah. So, what you know, is well, if, you, if, if you're a disc monkey and you are replacing disc. Monkey. disc um, it was a <laughs> variation of a tape monkey. Um, then yes, your job is in danger. But there's so much opportunity uh, by being able to... So when I say zero-sum game, I mean, okay, we talk about DBAs being shifting to data science. Yeah, exactly. The server guys need to managing the racks, managing they're going to become more analysts. They're going to become... Uh, Less partners, laborers. No, partners with the applications on delivering... Uh, the lowest cost, highest availability performance uh, of systems. That's where they need to be, is helping out. So they won't be data center monkeys? No, they'll be application. You know, John, monkeys. I just um, wrote a piece uh, on the way out <laughs> here, actually. That's a blog post title. So <laughs> no. I, got, I got a piece that's up on the homepage of Wikibon, how, how storage admins can stay relevant. Yeah, and so, exactly um, the same thing. What's your advice to server admins? How can they stay relevant? Is answer the question, what can I do to help applications run better, faster, better response time, less downtime? If you're answering that question and you're relevant to the applications, that is the way that you stay is in that, your job. Is that now, I mean, that's always, we've talked about this, the foreign culture of DevOps, dev mm. developers versus operations, right. and some people say ops and devs, and so, yeah. you know, operations, just a different culture yep. than applications. Um, is that an issue? Sure, it is. I mean, if if you if you try and stay in the past and and uh, you know you want to keep things exactly as they are, th that's going to be a challenge for you. You you you've got to be out there helping the Node uh, JSs of the world uh, put their applications in and get them working, uh, even if it's in a way that you don't uh, is is foreign to. You. We are here live at theCUBE. John Furrier at siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv with theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go out and broadcast the signal from the noise, interview analysts, experts, CEOs, startups, you name it, we'll find it, we'll talk to you. Uh, here with David Floyer and Dave Vellante from Wikibon doing the deep dive analysis and commentary on the Hewlett Packard Gen 8 launch, which is the ProLiant new servers. Uh, quick highlights here, and then I'm going to ask you guys to grade them, okay? So HP, Gen 8 solution, a two year effort, $300 million effort total, um, eliminates manual tasks, proactive insight architecture, basically application performance increase, and then 80% less energy, huge power issue, we didn't even get to that yet, this whole thermal sensing thing is cool, whatever they called it, insight, you know, thermal sure. something. Yeah. Uh, reduced uh, downtime by cost by cost by 40%, 6x performance on the smart array controllers, the new new array controllers, uh, and then management tools, 3x productivity, location discovery, science and services, this whole power thing. Um, this is scaling beyond compute. You know, the joke we were saying earlier, servers are the new peripheral, <laughs> right? So yep. servers, com just compute is now integrated. So so that's kind of the highlights from the Eagle Packard Gen 8. So guys, on this launch, I want you to grade them from a scale of one to 10, uh, one being low, 10 being the highest, okay, in terms of relevance to the marketplace, product, technology, business model, and benefits to customers. So, market market, market, market alignment with the market, market trends, alignment. product yep. technology, I'd business model, and then I'd, I'd benefits them a, to customers. I'd give them an eight on market uh, alignment. Uh, I, I think they're not tapping into the big data uh, story in a way that uh, that will differentiate them. I think they, they will need to catch up with that part of it uh, for, uh, for that one. The second one was... Product technology. Product technology. Within what they're offering, the, 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 what, what they've addressed, I think they have, uh, they're a nine on that. Uh, that's, it's really excellent uh, uh, development of the products themselves. Business model. Business. Uh, that one, I think, uh, David, you could probably comment on better. That the, uh, the I, I was very impressed with their their ab ability to s to go through the channel and provide these services to the channel themselves. 
you never get a. You got to give them a ten on the, on the business I, I, model. I, I think. I mean, so, the yeah. Russian judge yeah. would give them a ten. Yeah, I, yeah and I, you know, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I think just to back up a little bit, I mean, I would agree with you. Relevance, I had them at a seven. I thought technology and product at ten. I think business models. Hold on, hold on, them. hold on. What's your score? So, you so want to give them a ten? I, I was giving them an eight for the first one. Uh, nine. I gave them a seven. You gave them a nine. Hold on, let me make sure this goes. So, market eight, product, technology nine, business model. Business model, I think a 10. 10, yeah, okay, would, benefits, would to nine, 10. Yeah. Yeah. benefits to IT? Benefits to IT? Benefits to the IT, remembering there are a lot of other problems in IT as well, uh, in the development of other things like that. So in terms of overall relevance. Is this, a, is this an aspirin or a game changer? It's a, it's more than an aspirin, and it's not it's a game, not a game changer. <laughs> um, so it's somewhere in between. Okay. Okay. All so right, David Floyd, you're on the you're on the books. We got that recorded, Dave. Now your grades. But it's, so my grades are so I would give him seven on relevance. Uh, I think I think very high on product and technology. I give him a ten actually to David's nine. I think business model also very high, a nine or a ten. I think the whole channel thrust is really impressive. HP's getting serious about the channel. There's a big land grab going on with the channel, and then I think benefits to IT. I would agree. I mean, it's not. A, t a total revolution here. Nope. I mean, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's really it's great for the server admin. Yeah. I mean, it's Absolutely. really great yeah. news for yeah. the server admin now. You know, where's the server admin in the grand scheme of things? It's to me, it's you got to touch application development. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you've got you got to align with the business, and and I think this helps. You know, it's it great. Helps. It's yeah. good stuff. And you know, the other thing is is the com competition. I think that you know, it's it's it, from HP. HP continues to lead in servers. They they clearly are are number one, particularly in this ISS space. You know, yeah. the industry standard server space. Okay, so let's There's run no down your scores. So yeah. give me so the numbers again. Ten, nine. So relevance. No. You were you were. Oh, your score. I, I got your score already. I was an eight. No, yeah. what's your scores? I was seven. Seven. Yeah. Uh, product technology. Product technology. I was a ten. I was business a, model. I was a nine. Business model. I was a nine and a half. I was um, a ten. And then benefits. Benefits to IT, I think, are, uh, yeah, five, I was going to yeah. give us five or six, you know. Okay. I mean, overall IT. To server yeah. admin, you know, higher. Okay, so, yeah. here's, here's, so my scores are, on the market relevance, I would have given them a five or six, mainly because of what you were saying about the big data story. That's, they didn't really knock that out of the park. And I think the, the SSD story didn't come out true. So, but I'm going to bump them up to an, an eight and a half, mainly because I love the power and energy story. Yep. That thing is just, that is so relevant. Yeah. And that is a game changer. So I give them a, an eight and a half on, on relevance. Product, I give them a 10. Business model, I give them a seven and a half. Because the channel, although great, you know, you have the EDS and you have direct sales force. Not sure how it's going to pan out. Only, I give them a seven and a half only because I don't know that yet. Benefits to the customers, I give them a nine. Mainly because I think the energy piece and the this idea of automating some of the stuff on the configuration really will make a big difference. You know, how about marketing? How do you I think, think they did? Marketing-wise, I, I think, again, the story, back to the stories, I think they could have really amped up more of the relevance around big data. They did talk about data in their announcement. It was a key theme in there. And I think if you look at the success of Splunk, for example. They, they, they didn't address the application issue. They didn't go after yeah. the application and say how we're going to help. Okay, so that's the roundup so. drill down from the that's HP Gen 8 good. launch. Uh, John Furrier with uh, our research team from Wikibon, Dave Vellante and David Floyer. Uh, we're going to be right back to hear from the, the leader of HP's uh, enterprise storage servers and networking, David Donatelli, uh, in, in a few minutes. So watch this great ad by HP. Thanks for the support for HP, allowing us to do our amazing editorial cube. We love doing this here. So watch this from HP, and we'll be right back with David Donatelli.